one. Hello and welcome to this podcast, V Federal University. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is this is one of the most practical podcasts ever in Earth. And we are exploring applications of knowledge and wisdom. And we're bridging the gap between knowledge and wisdom using AI simulators. And we are here with Juan Pacello. Pacheco. Sorry, did I say it right? I'm going to delete this part. I'm going to say it again. Juan Pacheco. And I'm really excited for this conversation just because how practical it is. And I'm going to ask my questions. I'm very curious. And thanks for being here, man. It's great to be here, Liza. Appreciate you having me on. Awesome. Awesome. So I've heard that you're in cannabis industry. How rude of you. <laughs> so this, it's interesting, bro. I've been self-medicating with cannabis and it's kind of people tell me to quit and stuff, but I'm always skeptical a little bit. And recently I realized that there was this, because I'm also Christian. I see the cross on the corner. I also came to this realization that there are oils that included cannabis back in the days, in Jesus' days, and they were using it in rituals and stuff. Is that true or yeah. no? And just, that's, uh, that's the first time I've heard about it, but uh, there's definitely got, the cannabis definitely has uh, healing properties to it. So it wouldn't surprise me. That is very interesting, man, because the the oil name is Ape Sonoff, something like that, but it's apparently they would do it and they apply it on the skin and they would do the rituals with the effect of that. What interesting. So starting with very controversial stuff, but I'm personally like ADHD, right? So I'm very interested in medicating that because I see it as a superpower because for example, I can think faster. I can focus better sometimes, but most of the time is just like, I'm jumping from topics to topics and that helps. You could be an awesome generalist, but you need to be specific in life and do things, not chasing two rabbits, right? So what do you think about that? Like cannabis and ADHD? So I'm actually, I am a diagnosed for, for almost 15 years now with ADHD. I, I struggle with it a lot, but, but like you, I also consider it a superpower. I say it's uh, when, when a lot of people are using one engine, sometimes it feels with ADD where you're using 10 engines at the same time. Cause they're... they might not all be aligned with each other, but they're all going at the same time. And so, and oftentimes too, with, with ADHD, especially when it's, it's unmedicated, in the, in the proper way, uh, there's a lot of anxiety that comes about, a lot of social anxiety, physical anxiety. And, and so cannabis can definitely um, how it has been known to help with anxiety. Uh, but one of the issues on the market, uh, we definitely recognize, you recognize as well as mentioning self-medicated, it's getting the right product um, when it comes to, to your medication. There, in the cannabis plant, there's over 150 cannabinoids, which is a, a compound in the cannabis plant. Uh, THC and CBD being probably the, the most popular ones. Um, but there's also over 400 different terpenes in the plant, which many of are starting to show therapeutic qualities. And so one of the, the very challenging things is every time you grow a cannabis plant, different cannabinoids, different terpenes may become present in the plant. Uh, what we're doing at Exto Bio is we're very interested in isolating those different cannabinoids and then bringing them together in, in a cocktail solution or a, this, uh, special formula, essentially, that targets specific uh, conditions. So, for example, for, for, for pain, you need a high level of THC, which gives that analgesic property of, of, of uh, THC. But you don't need that for epilepsy because a high level of THC can actually um, induce seizures in someone who, who has mm -hmm. epilepsy. Uh, well, it's really about, it's about finding the balance between the different cannabinoids, but even more importantly, finding the right cannabinoids for your healing condition, uh, which can be very hard when, when you're going into a dispensary and studies show that over 60% of the products are mislabeled. Uh, you might not be able to, to have the selection of the various cannabinoids. You might just be able to find THC, CBB, if you're lucky, maybe CBN. But again, there's over 150. Um, and so that's kind of our, as the next Obitis mission is, is we're taking a science-based data-driven approach to, to help doctors figure out uh, which cannabinoids and which terpenes, not what ratio, are going to be best for patients. So that you, you me, anyone who, who might uh, end up self-medicating they don't have to guess anymore about what product is going to be best to run. They can go ahead and start choosing exactly that's what they need. This is perfect because in our company, we kind of use AI to do simulations. 
And we believe that AI is really created for simulations, not for chatbots and automation. That's cool. But that's kind of like a simulation. It's like a branch of it. But the main thing is for AI to predict, right? And when it comes to science, we have all the experience as data. And we could let AI to be creative. And some people call it hallucination, but we call it creativity that uses that data and do some operations, some experimentations and simulations and give us basically wisdom, a report that would be closest to wisdom, right? Without actually us having to do them on, on the lab, right? So I don't know if you've heard about this, but on Biohops by Dr. Priscilla Chain, she's doing tons of simulations using AI in a day, while back in the day, it has to be like, it could be only one per year, right? So right now we could do a bunch of these simulations and we're using it in this way. So I'm really excited to explore cannabis effects and all these different kinds of things that you're saying that has to be separated customized for the per patient and their body situation. That's awesome. So how do you see the application of AI advancing in medical industries and healthcare? Yeah, definitely. I think that's a great question. And one of the things that you brought up was efficiency. We, we have a team of scientists, but as, as humans, as, as individuals, we're, we're, we have a certain capacity for it. No matter how smart we are, no matter how quickly we can get through projections, yes. at the end of the day, we're limited in the, in the amount of a processing power that we have. Uh, so what we're doing is we're, we're leveraging the rigor of top scientists and then equipping them with the power of AI. So we can take what one, two, three, or a team of scientists can do, throwing AI on top of them and making things so much more efficient. Uh, so where you're starting with particular indications, epilepsy, autism, uh, chronic pain, but we want to move uh, eventually into a, a completely personalized um, approach for patients. So patient A with epilepsy is going to look very different than patient B with epilepsy. So because if epilepsy is different, uh, they have different uh, biometric data factors. Um, they're just very different people. Uh, and, it, and it changes by the month too. We think their medicine should also um, be personalized to their gaming condition and change with them throughout the month as they're experiencing different different, different changes in their life. Um, and AI allows us to do that. Um, it allows us to uh, put together quick formulas based on large data sets and the research that our, our team of scientists do, is doing, but also to using uh, some type of predictive analytics. Um, so one of, one of the um, use cases that we're looking at is particularly for epileptic patients. Uh, these are patients who struggle with seizures and there is certain uh, data points in, in there that their body will give off prior to a seizure happening that they might not even be aware of. We want to be proactive in, in helping them handle their seizures before the seizure occurs rather than reactive after the seizure occurs. And AI allows us to do that by taking in these large data sets, understanding at a, at a baseline level what factors are happening before a patient experiences a seizure and then being able to predict before the seizure happens so we can be ahead of the game when it comes to that. That's, that's the key. Pre basically predicting and preventing before the issue actually happening. So I really appreciate your effort. So this is like, I feel like we are building some sort of constitutional value in the world that uh, right now we just need to ask the right question and guide the AI. I don't know if you've heard about this because we have to tell AI if they're good at something or they're not good at something, right? And we, we, we tell that constitutionally. So the whole system would be actually fine-tuned for a goal or simulation. And that would really help with the predicting and preventing part. So what do you think about this? Basically on how to train AI models? Yes, constitutional parameters and basically applying things that we want AI to do and we don't want AI to do. Definitely. I think that's huge, especially in the realm that, that we're working in healthcare. Uh, we want to be, first of all, we want to be, build a, an ethical AI, uh, one that is, is considering all different sorts of factors, understanding the complexities between each individual, but also there are certain conditions or certain, certain healthcare factors that uh, different subsets of population experience themselves. Um, so being able to to be in, in keen with that and understand that it's not one large blanket approach. Exactly. But also too, 
constantly staying up to date and, and updating the, the algorithm as we learn new data points on healthcare. So that's one of the reasons we're, we're very, at least at Exto Bio, very keen on continuing research, exactly. the scientific side, and also having a, a close hand on the on the AI algorithms so, um, so that they don't go go crazy and start making all, all sorts of different projections that that are, are beneficial for the patient or for the doctor. Uh, but it's a, it's a huge it's a huge area of interest and importance. I see that. So I feel like this actually relates to your background in law, and I'm really curious to know about that. What made you become this cross-functional? Yeah, so I uh, I recently graduated, as, as you mentioned, from the University of North Carolina at Chapel oh. Hill with a law degree and an MBA um, on the business side. And uh, one of the reasons I uh, went to law school is is really when you understand the law, it's the language of society. Every law surrounds us, no matter your no matter your industry, right. no matter whether you're in business, if you're at home, law affects us. Uh, so one of the the things that I really enjoyed and was very determined uh, getting a lot is I wanted to be able to navigate um, society and navigate regulations, laws without any help, or at least yep. being able to take a stab at it first myself. Mm. Um, and so I, and my reason for getting the dual degree is I want to lead company, having a business and the legal side, uh, especially in the cannabis and, and healthcare industry. It's a yeah. highly regulated industry. Yeah. So being able to, to understand the regulations, being able to, to communicate effectively with our attorneys, um, understand their recommendations. Uh, and then also too, if, if anyone tries to bully us, like I can cut through, cut through the, the BS and understand yeah, but, that, uh, it might just be a threat, no least yeah. stand. I, I guess I witnessed that a lot through my career, like all a law stuff that you find in the contracts. But this is interesting, uh, man. Like my relationship with law was, I feel like was fascinating because when I was younger, I was Muslim, right? Like born Muslim, but then I became atheist. A kind of atheist that would walk up to people with religion and be like, no, why are you, what are you believing? Like stuff. Um, and I was very dedicated to do so, but then I became a developer, right? In the university I studied, and now I started to create law. And like, in law makes sense because it designs systems, right? And I'm like, okay, I have now respect for these people that create law. It's not like it happens by itself. You have to layer it, you have to test it, you have to start from somewhere and from somewhere else. Like, for example, the Old Testament is like basically mitzvahs, laws, right? And it's like, oh, lots, this, lots of laws in the Old Testament. Yes, it's awesome. It And it starts from like you, the society, the smallest cell in like biology society. And then it goes outwards, family, society. And then, you know what I mean? So it it's so like beautiful to me right now. And then I realized, okay, so all this law exists, but where's the blueprints? Where's the practical application of it? What's the example? What's the role model of a person who would follow that law? That's Jesus Christ. So I, I, I was actually convinced in the most logical way that, oh, wow. Because in factories, it makes sense. Like we have blueprints. We create all these different products based on one awesome blueprint that we have. But so, somehow people don't get it. Like, what do you think about this? <laughs> yeah, you know, the world around us is... Yes. We see wars breaking out. We see large natural disasters. We're, we're in a world of chaos. Law um, and, and regulations, and, and as you mentioned, even in coding, it brings order out of the chaos to where then we can operate as efficiently as possible as human beings, as a society, as a as an AI um, algorithm. Uh, without those those codes or without those laws, we revert back to chaos. Right. So I, I think it's. I, I really like that. Uh, a connection you made between like actual legal law and law development. Mm. Um, you know, I soccer my, my entire life. And there are laws within the game of soccer that allow us to enjoy and play the game. Exactly. If we take those laws out, there's no out of bounds. There's no offsides. Yes. There's no fouls. The game the game goes into chaos. People yeah. will probably just start fighting each other. Exactly. Um, at some some point, uh, they they fight each other even with the laws, but especially uh, when there are aren't laws there. Oh, so I think it, it's crucial, and, and it's a guiding point for everything. It's not necessarily to be controlled by the laws, but the laws and order allow us to mm. operate freely and operate to the the best of our algorithm's potential, 
our team's potential. Absolutely. Even from the, the moment we, we set up our company, we have bylaws. This is the way we're going to run our company. And this is how we're going to be successful. Uh, and that's how, how we become successful. Um, but like you said, you, you know, rule of life, this is how I'm going to wake up every day and I'm going to go to the gym and then I'm going to eat healthily. Those are self, self-inflicted self laws that I, I put on myself. Exactly. Uh, you know, diet, uh, with my exercise routine, discipline for another term. And it allows mm-hmm. me to flourish as a human being. It allows me to be mm-hmm. a, better, a better leader um, in, within my, my company. I really, I really liked uh, the correlation you made between. Of course, man. Um, thank you so much. It was like one of the awesome conversations I've ever had. Um, I feel like we're running out of time, but if you have any final words for the audience, I would be happy to hear it. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank you, Elijah, for, for having me sure. on here. It's been a, really been a pleasure talking with you and, and just getting to know a little bit about you too. It seems like you got a really fascinating background. Thank you. Uh, we'll tell everyone to, to give us a follow on, on LinkedIn and Instagram, uh, Xdo bio, the down there. bio, and uh, yeah, just know that there's something uh, something coming to the medical cannabis industry. If you're if you're currently self medicating, uh, we're excited to to begin working to foster that, that patient physician mm-hmm. relationship, so that your doctor can give you the the most precision medicine possible, uh, and you can start to to improve your. Thank you so much. I'm very down. Like I'm looking for such a treatment. That's awesome. This is the way you meet people, right? <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Um, it was great talking to you. Have a great day. Miguel, take care, boy.